Hello. Hello. Welcome. Hi, Anna. Welcome to Verbling. Hello, I'm Teacher Oakley, and for the next hour, we are going to learn, well, we're going to concentrate on learning prepositions two and four, but we're going to fool around with some other prepositions as well uh, and other uh, related, kind of related prepositions and some look at some common preposition mistakes that uh, that English second language learners tend to make. Uh, okay, we're gonna we're we're gonna jump back and forth. I'm gonna speak to you about things, and then we're gonna do a few exercises. We're gonna jump back and forth. Uh, in any case, uh, please feel free at any point. If I'm going on and on and kind of lecturing you about some certain aspect, if you have a question, don't be shy. Just go ahead and ask me a question anytime. Uh, okay. Let me start by doing a little microphone check and saying hello. Hi, Anna, again. <laughs> Hi, again. <laughs> nice to see you again. Thank you. Well, thank you. Hello, Heidi. Hello, nice to see you again. Uh, likewise, nice to have you here. Jacqueline, hello. Hello, good morning. Good morning, really? Okay, if you insist. Uh, <laughs> good morning. It's nighttime here. Uh, um. <laughs> okay, fine. Uh, all right, also, uh, welcome to Natasha. Hello, Natasha. Hello, it's good to see you. Hello, guys. Thank you. Nice to have you here. Hello, Jose. Jose Hello, teacher. Hello, teacher. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, I'm fine. Thank you. Great, welcome to the class. Uh, hello, Ilkin. Welcome. Hello. Hi, teacher. How are you? Hello, I'm doing okay thank you uh, thanks for asking welcome to the class uh, okay also Rafa's with us hey there Rafa hi What's teacher new? hi everyone oh hey, hey, hey. Uh, Rafa day with some of our classes I think uh, Berlin Dustin day okay well <coughs> welcome to the class uh, Senia hello how are you today Hello, I'm fine, thank you. Great. Um, nice to have you with us again. Terrific. And uh, it looks like we're uh, full up and ready to rock and roll. Um, Serene. Hello, Serene. Hello, teacher. Hi. Serene, where are you from? From France. France. That's in Italy, right? France? <laughs> <laughs> joke, joke. Just kidding. Okay. <laughs> Just pulling your leg. Uh, okay, welcome to the class. Nice to have you with us. Uh, okay, we're going to start. I know I advertise this class as being about two and four, and that's where we're going to start. But trust me, we're going to go a lot further than that. I've got plenty of material and plenty of practice material for all of us. Uh, uh, Okie doke. First, I'm going to start talking to you uh, was about some, some basics. Uh, we're going to look at two and four to get started. And then we're, we're I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to go all over the place. Uh, okay, first I'd like to do a screen share and talk to you people about four and two. Uh, ways to use four, first of all. Okay, some people are not sure how to use four and especially two and they get mixed up. Uh, we usually follow four. Here's a, a starter idea. We're going to go a lot farther. We usually follow four. It's very common. And I don't know if I'd say usually, but it's very common to follow four with a gerund. That is an ing form of a verb. To speak of a consequence or the cause of a reaction. So, as an example, she got a $100 ticket for speeding. Um, the consequence could be a good consequence. Um, 
she got an invitation to the political forum for speaking up at the Chamber of Commerce network meeting. Hmm. An invitation to the political forum. Is that positive? Okay. Uh, this is more positive. They were rewarded for capturing the great white shark. Okay, that seems better. Uh, okay, a very common phrase that you would hear if you attend a meeting, you would most likely hear someone say, I would like to thank you all or thank all of you for attending today's class, <laughs> for example, or meeting or whatever. Uh, okay. Anyway, let's move on. We also use for to speak of a purpose. Could I write the rule in the chat? Mm, um, okay, well, no, but I can copy-paste it. Uh, okay. Sure, Serene. Here you go. Boink. There you go. Uh, All righty. Moving on to number two. Uh, okay. Here you go, Serene. Number two. We use four uh, also to speak of a purpose. Why? Why, why, why? This type of fishing rod is used for deep sea fishing. For fishing. Again, with the gerund to show purpose. Uh, instead of like a reward or as a consequence, we also use it to show the purpose of something. Uh, a pencil is used for writing. Okay. Simple. Also, uh, we use for to speak of something that uh, is set aside for a purpose or the keyword here is earmarked for a person. It's to it's to be used by someone. Uh, uh, okay, something that has uh, is set aside for a purpose. It's reserved. We could say earmarked, reserved. Those are similar meanings. Uh, okay, to have or to use. For example. The food at the receptionist desk is for the meeting in the conference room B at 11:30. That's why it's that's what it is for. That's its purpose, or it is its purpose, or it's reserved for that reason. Uh, again, very similar. Uh, all these let reasons two, three, and four actually are all extremely simple. Uh, extremely, pardon me. Extremely similar where the key word here is purpose, purpose, purpose. Why? Uh, for example, where do you want to go for lunch? Uh, for what purpose? Well, for lunch. Uh, let's go to the sandwich factory for lunch. All right, so there you go. Four, essentially two things to remember from this part of the lesson, uh, followed by commonly by gerunds. Usually if you're going to use a gerund, you often have to use for, especially if you're talking about a purpose. Uh, or for can be followed by a noun. Now that's important. The keyword is purpose, a gerund or a noun. In actuality, a gerund is a noun form of a verb. So noun, purpose. Okay, let's move on to two. We use to and a verb to express a person's purpose. Uh, again, purpose, but with a verb. For, noun, verb, uh, to. Okay, so there you go. Uh, great. So, as an example, we went to the mall to do some shopping. Uh, okay, to do. Uh, 
notice some shopping comes later but uh, okay we went um, to the mall here too is used to show direction which is another purpose of two we'll get around to that later why what was the purpose to do uh, okay it's impossible to, for example it is incorrect completely to say we went to the mall for doing some shopping this is a common mistake that you should avoid it's not going to really work uh, you, you can't use this because because this doing is not actually a verb that doesn't make sense we, we can't have ing verbs without the verb to be to create a progressive or continuous tense same thing progressive continuous okay I am doing something I was doing something I will be doing something there's no verb to be here so this isn't a verb so this isn't this can't be a verb without the verb to be to help it so uh, it, it just doesn't work uh, okay Let's see here. We use to in order to indicate movement in a particular direction, as in what we just saw, to the mall. Uh, where are you going? To the mall. What direction? Uh, we're walking to the park. We're driving to the market. They're running to the bus stop. Okay. Uh, very good. Now, let's... Uh, Okay, let's, uh, before we review, let's, let's actually try this. I'm going to do something a little different. Uh, Anna, can you make a sentence with uh, four? I'm just going to go around the room and every other person, I'm going to request you to make a sentence. Uh, uh, with uh, with four teacher. With four, yes, please. Okay, I've I've uh, been married for th um, thirty seven years. <laughs> uh, okay. I've now been married. <laughs> I've been. No, you've been. That's it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've been married. How's that? How do you like that, Anna? No. No, 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 no. I know. <laughs> you, <laughs> you are kidding me. <laughs> I am kidding you. I am. You're right. All right. I have been married for 37 years. Four is also used in this way. Great. This was yesterday's lesson. If you missed it, we talked about prepositions of time. So if we want to express a length of time, uh, duration of time, we we use four. This this is not what we learned today. However, this is correct. It's okay. We're reviewing yesterday's lesson. I'm okay with that. Um, okay. Uh, X, how about two? Uh, Heidi's given us the slip. So, Jacqueline, can you try two? Two? Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, I go to travel uh, the last the the next month. Okay. I go to travel the next month. <laughs> uh, of course, one uh, one small problem here is you have this time phrase, Jacqueline. The next month uh, so this probably it's a month away that's quite some time away you probably want to use a future tense I will go yeah that's a little better I will go to travel the next month uh, you don't need the when you have words next or last again and we're reviewing time <laughs> we're reviewing time things 
from yesterday's class. Next month, I don't, I don't, I don't need an article here. Uh, if I have next or last in front of, uh, um, month or year, next month, next year, I, I don't really, I don't need the. Uh, okay, I will go to travel next month. Uh, um, I, I guess this is okay. Uh, I will go to travel. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I go. <laughs> here's the problem with this. Now, all right, here's something that we <laughs> also have to address. Uh, okay, here's the some verbs need to be followed by a gerund. Other verbs need to be followed by uh, the to travel, the infinitive form. Other verbs can be followed by either. The problem with go is really a better way to say this, Jacqueline, I will go traveling next month. All right, because go is usually followed by, by a gerund. Uh, I will go skiing on the weekend. I will go uh, walking after class. Do you see? Uh, uh, I, I, it can change the mean. I will go to eat after class. Mm, fine. Uh, you could use either, but in, in this case, after go, an activity, we're generally going to, especially an activity, we're going to use a gerund. Go golfing, go swimming, go running. Uh, all right. It, it can be either. Now, I can say I will go to play basketball. I can't say I will go playing basketball. <sighs> All right, so I, I think, well, maybe you're okay with I'll go to travel, but what you're doing there is you're creating, uh, you're creating an infinitive clause. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a tough example. All, all right. I, I think this is much better. I will go traveling next month. Anyway. You don't even need to do this because, okay, because you're using go, look, go and travel. Here's why I would say you have to use a gerund because it's unnecessary. You're going, meaning you're going to travel. If you go somewhere, I, you're traveling. So it's a little redundant. So you're phrasing this as if it were an activity. So the only way this makes sense uh, is like this. It is unnecessary because, in reality, why would you even bother to do that when you can just say, I will travel next month, <laughs> to make it much simpler. Okay. You're making it much more complicated, you see, than it needs to be. Thanks. Uh, well, okay. Well, sorry. Better luck next time. All right. <laughs> Natasha. Can you try four, and can we try to make this four uh, a purpose? <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm going to a swim pool for swimming. Oh. oh, boy. Okay. No, no, no. Uh, to a swim pool for swimming, no? To a swim pool. Yeah, yeah, there's no such thing as a swim pool. That oh, doesn't oh. exist in English. Oh, okay, okay, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. We have to say swimming pool. Mm -hmm, there's, a, mm -hmm. there's a swimming pool in the hotel. There's no such thing as a swim pool okay. in English. All right, it's always mm -hmm. swimming pool. I'm going to a swimming pool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, first. Uh, here we go again. Um, uh -huh. with uh, okay. Uh, for, oh, maybe for finding uh, for finding a job. Okay. Uh, <laughs> for finding okay. a 
Oh, well, here we go. The same. We, we're running. In, we're running into the same problem. I am going. Uh, you can exclude this. Just for now, ignore this. All right. Just think about your verb. I am going for shopping. Okay. Remember that. Uh, okay. Remember that. Going... Remember that example. Let me show it to you again. I cannot say we went to the mall for doing some shopping. I cannot say I'm going. We went to the mall for shopping. You just can't do that. Um, you've got two problems. You got the verb go, which is followed by again. You need to follow it with a gerund. Um, uh, well, no, here I'm going. You're, you're talking about a oh, never mind. I'm talking myself in circles. I am going to do an action, a verb to swim. It's an action. There, that's quite simple. I'm making it more complicated mm -hmm. than I need to. Uh, well, for it, saving you, my uh, health. No. No, if you, that's a verb. That's an action. If you're going to use an action, you have to use to. That, that's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that, which is also the problem with really with this mm -hmm. one with two is it's the other way. Uh, okay, anyway, this is an action, so this has to use two. You have to use four in a noun. Uh, uh, okay, for example, all right, I use fins for swimming. What is the okay. purpose? Mm -hmm. okay. okay. All right. Now this this is actually a noun. Uh, this swimming this gerund is functioning as a noun. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Like that. Uh, yes. Uh, all right. Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, Jose, are you still? here. Yes, you are. Jose. Yeah. Hi. Uh, Hi. How about you use two uh, the purpose, if you could, if you can, if you're willing, if you're able. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, one, one, one question. The second sentence, Yeah. I, I will travel next month. Uh, I, 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 I will travel to Europe next month. Now that is fine. Example. That would be fine. That would be great because you're talking about direction. Okay. All right? I'm talking to you. When I say I'm talking to you right now, I mean I'm talking in your direction, Jose, right now. Okay, so yes, we use to for direction or to show purpose when the purpose is an action or a verb. So there you go. Uh, mm, uh, I I use I use the computer. Uh, mm hmm. To write. Aha! Yay! To write what? Uh, emails. There we go. Nice complete thought. Perfect! Very good. Okay. Excellent job, Jose. Thank you. Thank you used you. it for a purpose, which is the purpose is an action. Great. Ilkin. Yes, teacher. Right there. Uh, yes, I will. Can you use four? Uh, Any way you want to. I dare you. Okay. <laughs> uh, a printing machine is used uh, for printing. Okay. Or uh, computer is used. Uh, in this case, this is okay. You use four correctly, all right, for the concept of printing. Okay, that's very good. 
one small correction here. I, I would have to say A. A clean sheet. Yes. Yeah, because machines are countable. One machine, six machines, 22 machines. So uh, I need an article with a countable noun. If I don't have any other determiner, anything else that determines what it is, I, you know, my printing machine, I could say that. Um, for example, this printing machine, I could say that. But if I don't have another determiner, I have to use an article for a countable noun. All right, switching back. Uh, Rafa, two, uh, two, uh, can you use two, challenge, can you use two twice in one sentence? <laughs> twice, yeah, <laughs> I'd try. Okay. I, yesterday I went to visit my mother due to, he was sick. All right. Well, almost. Almost. Uh, six. Two, two. Okay, now there's a pretty standardized phrase here. Uh, and okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, this is a little confusing, but okay. Due to the fact that she was sick uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. I went to visit my mother. Mm, uh, okay, I went. What purpose to visit? Okay, a purpose, which is a, an action to visit. That's very good. My mother, due to the fact. Now, this crazy little construction here. Obviously, we have two followed by a noun, which is not what we were looking at. <laughs> so. Lesson to be learned. We do have these crazy little subordinate clauses. Uh, we do have these little phrases in English where um, it's English. So the rules in English are all meant to be broken due to the fact is a very common phrase. Okay. This is very common. We use it to introduce a clause or introduce a sentence due to the fact I was sick yesterday. I will work later today. Uh, due to basically functions as the idea here. Due to is functioning not as do and then to the fact. You can't think of it that way. It's actually due to. Due to inclement weather, uh, because of inclement weather, basically this is functioning as a subordinator. It is acting as if it were a phrasal verb with a verb and to. Uh, okay, keep this in mind. When we're looking at prepositions, don't forget about phrasal verbs. Phrasal verbs are verbs that consist of a verb with a preposition behind it. In that case, we're not using it. In that case, it's no longer a preposition. In yeah. fact, we don't call it a preposition when it's used behind a verb to have one meaning, um, which this does. Do to has a specific one meaning. Um, uh, Okay, I could very well say because of the fact that she was sick. Uh, all right, so don't get fooled when you see phrasal verbs. When uh, you see we're going to eat out tomorrow night, eat out is a phrasal verb. The out is not a preposition any longer. Now it becomes what we call an adverbial particle. It is an adverb which is part of the verb. It's not a preposition. So it does not have to fit it does not have to follow any preposition rules. It doesn't have to. It may or it may not. It may do some tricky things. So keep that in mind. So actually I'm glad you did that because that's a very, very good point. 
When you're playing around with phrasal verbs, they may not follow the rules that we're learning about prepositions because they're not prepositions. <laughs> they're not. They have become something else. They're part of a verb. Okay, that was interesting. Thank you, Rafa. Uh, Senia, you want to give it a try? Yes. Four. Back to four. Okay. I need uh, 20 muffins for my birthday party. Need to make the muffins? Okay, to make the muffins. <laughs> Is that what you said? I don't know. What you 20. Said. 20 muffins. To what? Number. Number 20. Two zero twenty. 20. I, I don't get it. I need to 20 the muffins? 20 muffins, yeah. I need 20 muffins. Yes, I need 20 muffins. Oh, okay. For my birthday party. <laughs> okay. All right, I got you. I need, oh, my goodness. I need 20 muffins. For? For my? My birthday party. Birthday party. Oh, okay. For what reason? For followed by a noun. Okay, this noun has party. This noun party. has an adjective. It has a determiner. But anyway, the noun is here. Actually, I like this example. It shows how the noun does not have to follow exactly behind the preposition. In fact, it can be loaded with other adjectives and, or determiners in <coughs> front of that noun. Okay. Okay. That works for me. I, I like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, goodness. A lot of rotation in this class. Serene, are you there? Serene, you want to try two? Yes, still there. Still um, here. <laughs> With the two, okay. Uh, I have to practice my English more to improve my okay. French. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, did you say more? I have to practice my English more. Yeah, to improve my fluency. Uh, to improve my fluency. 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 Great. All oh. right. All right. Now we have something interesting going on here. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, to imp I'm going to tackle the end of the sentence first because it's easier. <laughs> we definitely have, the, this is definitely a purpose. Why is he doing all this in order to improve his fluency? Clearly it's a purpose. Clearly it's a verb. It's an action. All right, that's going right along with what we learned. How about up front here? What is this, Serene? Do you know? Uh, no. <laughs> it looks like it could be an infinitive. It looks like it might be um, a have followed by a prepositional phrase. Looks like it might be a phrasal verb, but it's none of those things. <laughs> in fact, this, in fact, is what we call a phrasal modal. I could, if I so <coughs> deemed it necessary, I could, I could change this <coughs> to I must practice. Right? Couldn't I? Doesn't it make sense? Yeah. Yeah, it sure does. Have to and need to are what we call, these are modals like should, could, would, must. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, have to or need to are just phrasal. They're the same thing, really, as must or, or it's very similar. Mm. Uh, these are modals. But, so. but must is, the, is a very strong. Must is very strong. So is have to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay, you have to understand. You must understand. <laughs> Actually, this brings up an awesome point that I want to make to you guys, all of you. This is really a super common mistake that I want you to learn right now. Never, 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 ever, 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 ever follow a modal 
must, could, would, should, can, any of mm. those. Um, never follow them with either an infinitive, I must to practice, wrong. Okay, or I must, I must practicing, wrong. All right, it's you actually cannot follow any modal with an infinitive, uh, with a gerund, or with a preposition even. Okay, and that seems counterintuitive because when we use have to, have to has to. That's because this is considered a modal. This is a unit. In English, we have phrasal verbs. We have phrasal modals. Uh, compound nouns. We have we have words that are combined that are considered grammatically to be one word. And th in this case, this particular have to is considered as a modal. Always modals must be followed with the basic form of the verb. In reality, it is an infinitive, but it's called a bare infinitive. No two. We, we can't have two. So I should practice. I could practice. I would practice. I might practice. I may practice. I can practice. Uh, any of those. Practice. I can't say I can practicing. I can to practice. I could to practice. All right. Very important point there and a very, very common mistake. So actually, thank you, Serene, for that learning opportunity. Um, that's a very important point, and it's really such a common mistake, honestly. Uh, okay, Hajar, you've been waiting ever so patiently. You and Jose. Hello, Jose. I see you as well. Hello. Uh, hi, Jose. Nice Sorry, to see you. I'm not ignoring you. I was kind of on a roll. Uh, yeah, okay. I hope you understand. I get so excited. Um, Hajar. Hi there. Hello. Hello. Uh, okay, Hajar, can you attempt to form uh, a sentence with uh, the preposition for? Mm -hmm. For uh, for have a good job, we we need you need to uh, to learn. Uh, good in your school. You need to learn what? Good in your school. You need to learn good? <laughs> yeah. In our school? In your school? Yeah. I forgot what. Okay. School. <laughs> All right. Wait a minute. Okay, let's talk. All right, Hajar, wait. Four is got to be, we can't do four in a verb. You just can't, all right? Never. Uh, uh, just, you just can't do it. It will never work. Um, it, is, it may be possible, okay, to use the gerund for having a good job, but no. Uh, we're not going to do this. We can't really do this, actually. Um, we can't start a sentence this way. For having a good job, uh, well, well, maybe we could. Um, uh, let's see. For writing, let me give you another example. For writing, pencil is a good tool. Okay. Whoops, writing, that's with a W. <clears throat> All right, now can, I can do this. What I uh, have done, I have created, I've made this into a subordinator. Notice the comma. I have to have a comma here. Now this is a weird sentence, frankly, and either you wouldn't normally ever do this. You would simply say, you would stick this on the end. Why would you not? Um, a pencil is a good tool for writing. 
okay, this would be the normal way to say this sentence, all right? Would you agree? Um, if you don't, uh, too bad. Now, what you might do here is because you want to introduce this idea. I understand what you're trying to do. Let me express to you that it is very normal. Hajar, it's not normal. It's still a little weird. It is, it is m more normal, but very formal. Normal, but formal. To start a sentence with an infinitive. This is quite formal language. You would not generally use this in speaking. It would be maybe something you might try in a very formal academic paper, for example. To have a good job, we need to learn uh, good. There's a problem here. Now you might do this. To have a good job, we need to learn uh, need to. There's our modal again. Same thing. To learn, uh, okay, good is not good here. Ajar. Uh, what should this be? Uh, and do you know why I can't use good here, Ajar? No, I don't know. Because good is an adjective. So I can only use good in front of a noun. And I don't have a noun. Um, what I have is a prepositional phrase. Uh, good times, good job, good car. Okay, I can, I can put, I can say that. Uh, it just simply won't work without a noun. Adjectives don't work dangling all by themselves. Uh, okay especially not in front of a prepositional phrase. So I need well, which in fact, well is an adverb. We need to learn well. Okay. Good job, good car, good dog. I cannot say well dog, well job. Oh, he did a well job. That doesn't make sense, right? Yes. Uh, okay. Is this Hajar? It's okay. Learning experience. This is a very common mistake. I'm glad you made it. I'm sure others will profit from this. Good is an adjective. Well is an adverb. So you have to use them how you use. You have to follow the adjective and adverb rules. All right. So we have no four here. Oh, I'm sorry, Hajar. <laughs> you do not get a point. Oh, terribly sorry. We need to learn way in our school for have a good job. Uh, no? For have a nope because you you still got four half. Okay. You, you simply cannot use for verb. Yeah. Uh, you can use for and the ing or gerund form for having may be possible if we rework the sentence somehow. Um. Uh, for learning would be possible. Uh, um, for keeping a good job, uh, okay. There, there's ways we could work it around if we, you know, somebody had a gun and we had to use for or else. We could probably work it out. But uh, I need to give Jose a chance. Uh, I, I have a question. Shoot. So no problem. Yeah, can, can you go up? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, can we say to have a good job, we need to learn without cheating in our school? Without cheating. So after learn well without cheating. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I don't. And see why we have uh, e n g at the end of uh, the verb cheat? Uh, uh, if is it correct in first? Yeah. Yeah, it's correct. You've got uh, a gerund. This is called a gerund clause. You've created a gerund here. Absolutely. There's no verb to be, so it's not a main verb. Um, without cheating, and this is a very common way to create a gerund clause, actually. You're creating a kind of a negative gerund clause. Um, mm -hmm. Very common. Without or never. Um, you know, never but screaming what? fire in a... In a what is the theory, rule? Good policy. What, yeah. what is the rule to indicate that uh, we have to 
to to write ENG at the end of the verb, which is a rule. Yeah. Is it, uh, Ha, ha, ha. Uh, mm -hmm. What is the rule exactly? Oh, my yeah. gosh. So well, a Christian. okay, if you want to si sign up for about 10 private lessons with me, I would gladly go over that with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, get it. Uh, ouch! Um, I have a big, fat grammar book that's about a 1,000 pages, which dedicates about a 100 of them to gerunds and INGs. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, sorry, but there's no way I can cover that in the next 10 minutes. I just, no, I can't. Okay. okay no I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just, I admit defeat. I'm defeated. There's no way. <laughs> yeah. I surrender. Okay. I'm vanquished. Uh, all right. Let me give Jose a shot here. He's been waiting ever so patiently. Jose? Yes. Okay. I, uh, every day I go uh, to work by train. Okay. Um, and uh, why? what is the purpose that you go to work? Okay, every day I go to work. He's talking about direction. Um, direct, not direction necessarily, I, but... Um, I go to, to the work. To work? No, this is good. Okay. It's good? Work. Okay. Yeah. It's a routine. Okay. Why do you go to work? Sorry, why, why do you what? Yeah, yeah, why do you go to work, Jose? What's the point? What's the point? Yeah, what's the point in you going to work? To the point, uh, I'm going to to the work to earn money. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I wanted to hear. Okay. <laughs> Woohoo. Okay. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Okay, excellent. Okay. Thank you. Um, it's work uh, with for sorry. It's work with for living. Uh, for a living. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, you could do that if you would like to. For a living. Living here is clearly a noun because we have a in front of it. Uh, okay. So this is for with a gerund. You're adding a little bit of a, a prepositional phrase, gerund clause. Yep. You can do that, absolutely. Every day I go to work and go. Go is a tricky verb. We, we can use a infinitive or, or a gerund after it. But we can't use, okay, I go swimming. Obviously, that's a gerund. I go to work. I go to swim. I can use that. I can't say I go for swimming. You just can't do that. And it's more the nature of the verb to go. All right, it's easy to make mistakes here. Um, for a living. All right. Well, there we go. There's four with clearly this is a, a gerund because we we've, we've got an article. So this has got to be this living is serving as a noun. By train, short preposition. Oh, we got another preposition in here. And why? For the purpose of to earn money. To with the verb. To earn. Um, so, sorry, teacher. Um, yeah. I have other idea. After train, uh, after train, uh, yeah. we put to to spend less money. Okay. Instead of to earn. Yes. Uh, 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 I, uh, I suppose uh, you work for earn money, but I go to the train uh, to spend less money. Oh, okay. Wait a second. Every day I go, I see your idea. Every day I go to work for a living by train by train to spend less money. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Hang on. Let me wrap my head around this. Give me half a second. I go to work for a living by train to spend less money. Okay. Yes, because the purpose in this case, in this case, yeah. uh, to go by train, 
is to spend less mon money than you you going to work by by car. Yeah, I get it. For yeah, example, I, for example. I get it. Ah, okay. Well, this is where you get into very English gets very tricky because all right, uh, all right. Yeah, you're right, and it works. But now this gets very tricky because now we're asking ourselves. Wait a minute. Does he go to work to spend less money, or does he go by train to spend less money? Uh, I go, all right, to work for a living, or I go by print by train. Right. This, this can be very tricky, actually, in English. This this can be very confusing. This is a cause for there. There are jokes based on this concept when we have. Um, uh, a main verb followed by two possible clauses, and they can be inter interpreted either way. All right, you, you got to be careful when you're doing this. Um, it, 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 honestly, it's grammatically correct either way, and it still makes sense. Uh, okay, uh, Nader, hello, welcome to the class. Hi there. Uh, hi. Want to make a sentence? <laughs> Want to make a sentence with four for what it's worth? Uh, sure. Okay. Shoot. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, have at it. Okay. A question. All right. Nobody attempted that. Mm, what do you do for a living? Okay. Very super common question. Very ordinary English. Great. What do you do uh, for a living? Uh, all right. Terrific. There's four with obviously, again, a living, obviously, uh, being used as a noun. Okay. Let's, we have five more minutes. Let's review. <laughs> Let's say it in a different way. To is used with verbs, as you all know, or should know by now. Uh, okay, uh, example, the verb to be. Uh, it is also used in cases where a transfer happens. That can be a transfer of actual physical objects, objects or a transfer of information. Uh, really anything. I will give this book to you from me to you. I will go to work, from home to work, as in an example we saw earlier. I will talk to her. Information will be transferred from me to her. Okay, review time. For, again, for the benefit of, I will do that for you. Okay, there we, we see an example where the noun is a pronoun. Purpose. For the benefit of, this is another way to think about for sometimes when you're trying to consider for and to. This is can be helpful. It's helped me before, honestly. Thinking about if it's going to benefit somebody, if that's the reason. Uh, I This can be, actually, this is quite uh, this is something to consider. When you're thinking about transfer, when you have a difficulty with two and four and transfer, uh, okay, are you really talking about um, just simply transferring something, or are you talking as it's supposed to benefit somebody? For example, I have a book to give you. Great, I just want to transfer it. I have a book for you, which you need for class. Ah, in that case, I you, this book is to benefit you, so I would prefer to use for in my sentence. Uh, this brush is for painting. Uh, okay, great. Um, especially Portuguese speakers. Hey, any port port the Portuguese speakers in the class? Uh, Give this book to him, but it is for his father. Uh, I will speak to her. Okay, let's let me mess around with something here. What? All right, 
get rid of this so as not to confuse. Uh, what? What? What if I change this? What if I change this from I will talk to her to I will talk for her? What does that mean? What did I just change? Uh, uh, to talk for someone? Yes. That means that you speak uh, at uh, his or her place? Yeah, or in their behalf. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and, all uh, right. If you talk to someone, that means that you speak uh, directly with this person. To okay. this person. So the reality here is when we use to, we're talking about transfer, transferring information. When we use for here, I will talk for her, it's really uh, in, to benefit her. You're speaking in their place or in their behalf, like uh, if you think yeah. about it, speaks for you, he's definitely attempting to benefit you. Well, hopefully he is. Anyway. Uh, okay. All right. All right. So sometimes we can change meaning, and uh, by using switching two and four quite a bit, and sometimes they're interchangeable in a sentence. Two and four. This actually happens surprisingly quite a bit, where we we don't know if we're really talking about benefit or talking about transfer. And sometimes it really changes the meaning, so I wanted to point that out. Um, okay, well, looks like this lesson really was about two and four. That's great. Does anybody have any last-minute questions? Because we are almost out of time for this class. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, teacher. I'd like to, to tell an um, example. If if it is correct. Yes, go ahead. Uh, my mother-in-law uh, gave to me an all earrings um, like gift uh, for my wedding. Uh, okay, let me just fix this immediately. As a gift. As a gift for my wedding. My wedding. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> my mother-in-law gave to me. Now, here's the thing. Well, one other thing. Earrings is plural, so we cannot, we simply cannot have a or an with a plural countable noun. Um, yes. All right. My mother-in-law gave to me old earrings. Um, you don't need to. Yeah, I don't need to say to because the no. verb itself, the verb itself describes a transfer. That's what give means. Give means an object is transferred from one person to another. All right? Okay. So when the verb says it, we don't need to do it. For example, you don't have to worry about using the correct future tense when you use the actual verb plan. All right? I plan to go to Spain. You don't say, I am going to plan to go to Spain. Um, you don't need to concern yourself with what the verb tense does or what the grammar rule does if the word itself already achieves that goal, especially with verbs. So it's not necessary here. Okay. All right. But uh, the, the last part for my wedding, that is correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay. Thank you. Any other last minute Anything? If not, uh, we're already over time. Thank you, everyone, for your contributions. Oh, sorry, sorry. I have a last uh, request. Sorry, I have a last request. Can you share your doc, your doc, please, your documentation? Is it possible uh, for you to share it? Uh, if it's possible, if you contact me, okay. Um, I think Amen. I used it. 
different document, which I meant to get to in the class, which I never did. Um, if you contact me by uh, the um, message board where you get tutors, okay, the okay. tutoring page, yeah. if you, you contact me and just say, hello, can I have the document, I'll, I'll send it to me. Remind me which one it is, the two and four. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so what is the, the title of OK Grammar? Grammar. Uh, okay. Just two, two and four. Okay. Okay. Yeah, just tell me two and four. I uh, that's good enough. All right. And remember, I'm Oakley Moody. So just find me and um, sure. Anyway, be happy to send it to you. Okay. Uh, thank you, everyone, very much. Thank you too. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Thank Good night. You. See you. Bye bye. 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 See you. Okay. Uh, buenas noches, everyone.